it seems like every Overland type of video starts with the drone shot. And we are no exception. My name is Dewey Jones. I'm the host of this channel now. I am not an Overlander, but my work has forced that lifestyle on me. And my goal is to learn the art of long-term four-wheel drive camping. Now, what I am is an off-roader, been one for 20 years, and if you are new to our channel, that's what we do here. Our goal is to provide videos that help people. Well, that's what I'd like to think we do here. We mostly make off-road trail guides that show off this beautiful state with unique off-road action. Our intention is to help off-roaders and would-be off-roaders navigate a trail as well as being a resource to determine if the trail is for you and your vehicle. My personal goal is to make them scenic and entertaining as much as they are informative. However, today brings a new challenge, to make a camping video worthy of your time when you don't know anything about camping. So this is what we're going to do in this video. We will show you beautiful winter Colorado scenery from all over the state. We're going to give you the details on our camping spots, determine how everyone fared with their respective camping setups in this freezing cold weather we will encounter. We're going to show you what we do when we're winter camping. We're also going to review an Airbnb, which that will make sense later. And we're going to take you on a very scenic route to Pueblo while talking about some unique Colorado history that you may not know about. And if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you how I think we'll make these videos better in future episodes. For now, let's get to our campsite. Well, the campsite that I picked. And we'll see how that is. This winter camping trip was my idea and we are now climbing to the location I thought would be a great winter camping test. Yes, that's right, test. You see, my work was sending me to Pueblo, which meant I needed to go back to living in my off-road camper. However, I haven't lived in it in a while as the last time I used it, it caught on fire. After that happened, one of my friends put me up in a room and my buddy Cotton, who you may remember from our snow wheeling trail guide, Aldrich Lakes, helped me get it back into working order. Anyway, I hadn't camped in it since that because things got crazy at work and, you know, just life happened. Anyway, I thought rabbit years past camping would be a great trial by fire, but most surprisingly, others wanted to join me in this winter camping experience, so I figured, let's make a video. Okay, why do I want to camp here? Well, if you watched my Rabbit Ears Peak Trail Guide, then you know I love the area up here and I think the scenery is top notch. Also, if you haven't seen that Rabbit Ears Peak Trail Guide, you should check it out because it might be worth the drive from wherever you're at. Anyway, before the camper caught on fire, this area was my go-to spot for camping for a couple days at a time. Now Dewey, you said you're a novice camper and you don't know what you're doing. Well, that's definitely true. But a few days at a time sounds somewhat decent, well, maybe. But this is what I was making for food and I was using camping wipes to replace showering. I think it's pretty clear I have a lot to learn about camping. Luckily the crew I'm with today knows a thing or two about camping and we're going to learn some stuff from them. Alright, we made it to Rabbit Ears Pass. Now I was pretty certain we were going to be able to camp on Walton Peak. It was groomed two weeks ago, um, looked perfect for Jeeps, but I just talked to some forest rangers and we can't camp there. Um, they did say the parking lots are okay, uh, but that may not be the greatest video. So I've sent a message to the group. We're going to see if we can come up with a plan. I'm going to continue with Craig because I got to pick up my camper. And I do know some other spots around here that should be awesome. But I mean, this it's so awesome up here. It's snowing right now. It's beautiful. <music> If you are a skier, then you may recognize this ski town. This would be Steamboat Springs. If you were here when this channel first started, then you might know that I made some skiing guides and that I am a retired ski instructor. 
Some of you guys liked those videos and joined up because of that and haven't seen anything further. However, I will let you know I'm going to try to find a way to make those guys in the future, but it probably won't be on this channel. However, stay tuned. I'll let you know once I figure it out. Anyway, let's get back to this trip and this camping adventure. It's time to get to Craig and we're going to go pick up the camper and recruit Cotton to come freeze with the rest of us. This is Craig, and at this point in time, I've picked up the camper and I'm on my way to Cotton's house to convince him to go winter camping. So I came over this hill with the camper and I slid here. This road is extremely slick. I parked it over here, but I don't know if it's safe to take down. I'm trying to figure that out right now. Basically, I was jackknifed sliding down. Luckily, the Jeep gripped and was able to pull it into the snow, but I'm really nervous about taking it down this hill with cars there, U-Haul there, truck tundra there. If I jackknife, I would go right into them. So I'm trying to figure out what the best, best way is right now. There's cotton. Should have brought the Toyota. Sure you don't want to relax? Camp, I got a ton of beer. <laughs> I might. Cause you're heading out there now? Yeah. People want to see you. They like you. They like you more than they like me. <laughs> what did you guys get? Stickers. <laughs> <laughs> All quiet now. <laughs> uh, I can't find the thing where... Did I send you the link for it? Yeah. Is it something derogatory against Jeep? Yes. Cotton, are you going to come? Yeah, I'll come. Yes! I'm going to go... <laughs> Alright. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be wild. I just had my meal. I'm about to go to the full tent full time overland life again. Ah, oh, this morning's been exhausting. The first part of this drive was my regular drive to work from Craig to Phippsburg, Colorado. I'll show you a little of it, but I'm afraid my camera doesn't quite do justice for the beauty of this state. Anyway, this is our first attempt to tell an overland type of story. Now I know everyone has their own definition of overlanding, and I'm not going to argue it. For our purposes, our overland videos will be a story with camping, and I'll get more into the specifics later, but for now, I want to set up this next clip, which I think can be called My Disappointment. All right, so the trip from the high country down to Pueblo is going to require some highway use and some of the other stuff like that, but I will try to take the most scenic route, and right now we're on a snow-covered dirt road. Can't get better than that. Well... It could be better if we are bashing skid plates or if I had outside footage from this trip. Anyway, if you can't tell from the stuff I shot day of, I was exhausted. I'm not an early riser and driving from Denver to Craig and now down to the river was slightly draining. However, it's all good as we'll soon be in radium with the crew while drinking beers and doing whatever else winter campers do. Now I may not have said it, but you may be wondering about my job with all this moving around. Well, I'm a locomotive engineer and conductor and that's about all I can say as my employer has a strict social media policy. Still, I can probably say I do love my job although I have people who aren't so fond of all this moving I do and have been doing lately. But I signed up for it so it is what it is. we are passing Tolan and some of my favorite camping spots are around here. Now I work on call and I need cell service for work so you get AT&T service here but I could not get Verizon. Now that may have changed by the time this video is up but just so you know. 
These are great spots, but if you decide to camp in the area, definitely save a spot for me as I'll need one. After we get past Tolan, we start our drop towards the river and soon we will be at camp. This road can be full of wildlife, so be careful in the blind curves. Now I love the views on this portion of the road, but I wish I could show you the route from the rails as I think they might be some of the most scenic rails in Colorado. Anyway, once we make it to the river, we will turn left onto a dirt road at State Bridge. This dirt road is the Colorado River Headwaters Scenic Byway, and it takes you all the way to Rocky Mountain National Park, passing Kremlin and Granby along the way. We'll talk and show more of this route after camping, but for now, I need a beer. Hey, I know that Jeep. Hey, dude, Jones. Hey, what's up? Is everybody there? Find you. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, so. we're literally about like two, three minutes down we'll that kind of drop to the left. Okay. You'll see all the guys down there. You know, they got the tent set up and everything. Sweet. How's this running? Oh, this thing's doing great. Now they got the starter in it. Heck yeah. What's up, man? How are you doing? Are you filming too? I'm filming you. Now I can do Instagram posts and let everybody know how tough I am. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got the screws. You're not supposed to. What? It's supposed to be at a, it's supposed to be at like a 30 degree angle or something like that. It's supposed to support the weight over the edge. It does. Does it? Look, my fat ass is sitting on here and I am falling off <laughs> and my feet sit down here at the bottom. I, so I'm, I'm just concerned for your tent. So I'm pretty sure I've I know, when we concerned for the tent, not his safety. Yeah. Hey Sean. Hi, welcome to or, way to show up to the party 87 hours after we found a better campsite but couldn't go to it because we were waiting on you. Well, <laughs> Enough. We don't need to be throwing shade. <laughs> Do you know what? Wait. I, now I just what? got totally distracted from what I was going to say. Come on, Sean. I got you on camera. <sighs> no, it's all right. I don't need to be in this video. <laughs> you know what happens when you go through a trauma traumatic experience and then all of a sudden you don't remember anything of a day? Yeah. I'm never going to watch that video. Is so. that Red Cone? Might be. I don't know. Never heard, I've never heard of Red Cone. What's did Red you, Cone? Did you watch the most recent video? Yeah. If you did want some treatment for that trauma-induced sure. amnesia... I'm getting my degree in It's called psychology. booze. I gotcha. There we go. We're all ready to make dinner. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm hungry. I'm starving. Yeah. Camping with two each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, of course, don't know what the hell I'm doing. So Kyan's going to help me show, or show me how to use my jet foil knockoff. That's what we're going to do. Jet foil knockoff. Right. You can do it and it won't melt through the bottle. is showing me how to do <laughs> mountain house food. That's how good it is. Tastes a little snack. Pour the boiling yeah. water into the mountain house. Just house food. That's how good of an overlander I am. Yeah. Using jet boils. Do not yeah. make your food in the jet boil. Okay, don't. It as soon as you're done. We're leaking oh, a little, but. Best used by August of 16. <laughs> oh, this is good. For privacy for the toilet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Soup half the time. I don't care. Nico did the same thing with our first one. My Just spaghetti came out great. I don't know what you did to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good for like it's not gonna be years. the best. But well, I mean, like in the apocalypse, like, I'll eat that. I actually look but, like. After dinner, we started drinking. Well, we continued drinking as we spent the night talking about beards, God, and mud trains. We also tried our hand at intoxicated nighttime photography. It didn't go well. It was a great night, but let's get some sleep and see how we fared overnight in this brutally cold weather. Because it's, I'm blind. So we're going to go sleep. We're going to do whatever overlanders do at night. And then we're going to do the fun thing and actually off-road tomorrow. There you go. Bye. Craft beer rooftop chance. <laughs> the usual God beard. And then go from there, but like. Um, By yourself or do you go somewhere? God beards and I do. Okay, how long is your beard? From it's 3 a.m. 
my heater stopped working and it ended up being low voltage. But now I fixed it by using my Rock Pals 250 with my trickle charger and that is what's charging it. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but at least we figured out a problem and problems always have solutions. I'm gonna go back to bed and hopefully this lasts through the night. We'll see. Now that I've had my Red Bull, let's keep the video moving by talking about our night while I'll show you the morning. First off, it was cold with a low around 9 degrees overnight. I'll start with me, so yeah, my diesel heater easily handled the cold, that is when it was working. Yeah, it died again in the morning as a result of the battery voltage dropping too low. However, I did have my zero degree sleeping bag available to me in the camper. Another issue I ran into with the camper is that it got too hot when I ran it. I believe this is a result of me keeping the controller with the thermostat near the window and I lose a ton of heat at my windows. Overall, I'll say that it was an okay night. I did re-establish or re-aggravate some previously established frostbite in my hands, but I did get some sleep and I know that I can tweak this setup for better performance in the future. <laughs> so how did Sean's rooftop tent do? Well, Sean used the Mr. Buddy propane heater and insulation shell for his tent in a zero degree sleeping bag. He told me he had a great night and was warm with that setup. What about Cotton's ground tent? Well, he was in a negative 25 degree sleeping bag inside a zero degree sleeping bag on top of an elevated cot. If this setup is properly ventilated, Cotton says you'll stay warm through the night. Unfortunately, he didn't properly ventilate his tent, thus he froze a little bit and it was pretty cold for him without a heat source. Now let's hear from Zach and see how he did with his ground tent, Mr. Buddy Jr., a 20 degree sleeping bag with hand warmers. All right, Zach, how was your uh, your night camping in this frigid wilderness? It was actually pretty good. It was my first time doing some winter camping. I had a 20 degree bag. It got down to about 10 degrees, so it was a little chilly, but I was still mostly comfortable. Slept all through the night, so I can't complain. Heck yeah, what are you gonna do now? Uh, I think I'm gonna go run up to Radium Hot Springs up here on the hill and see if I could freeze my butt off walking back down. Well, for one, I hand it to everyone that came out and dealt with this cold, but especially those in those ground tents. It was brutal. You just have to trust me on that. Anyway, how did those new to our videos handle the cold? Let's start with Brett, also known as That Iowa Guy. He was in a rooftop tent with tent insulation, a negative 25 degree sleeping bag. He used a Mr. Buddy propane heater right before bed and also in the morning. And he said he was very comfortable with this setup. Finally, let's talk about Nico, Dallas, and Gypsy's setup in their F-350, and yes, this F-350 hits the trails. They use sleeping bag liners inside a zero degree sleeping bag inside a queen size sleeping bag. They used merino wool base layers with a dog for additional warmth. It kept them pretty warm, although I was told they didn't want to get out of bed in the morning, but I think that was true for all of us. All right, before we get out of here, let's hear from Sean about his awesome new tires. Yeah, 265, 65 R17 KM3s. Got to play with them in the, in the snow yesterday, and they were terrible on the ice, and I almost slid off a cliff and died. But in the steeper, kind of more packed snow, I guess they've been doing pretty good. Um, but they're super loud. Everybody who says they're not loud, they're lying to you. They're just deaf, I think is the problem. Um, but yeah, I guess, we'll see how they do in actual like off-roading situations, but they certainly do look rugged. Can't argue with that. All right, I hope you enjoyed checking out our winter camping spot and our night in the cold. Anyway, my goal is to keep these videos moving and I usually want to keep them under 20 minutes. But the most scenic portion of the trip is coming up and I still have a lot of good stuff to show you. Anyway, I'm going to take you all the way to Pueblo and we're going to finish this one off strong. We are back on the Colorado River Headwaters Scenic Byway heading towards State Bridge or away from Kremlin and Rocky Mountain National Park. The entire byway is about 80 miles long, that is if we started at Grand Lake. 
Our trip is considerably shorter, but it's extremely scenic. It takes about 100 minutes to drive the entire route, but to truly enjoy it, expect to spend about 6 hours along the way. Also, you will start off on the high end at Grand Lake and end in the low end at State Bridge. You drop about 1700 feet over the entire trip. Although off-road trails are always going to be the focus here, after reading up on this byway, it gave me the idea of maybe doing a video from start to finish, showing you all the different things along the way, showing you the pretty imagery, you know, just giving you an idea of an adventure you can do on your own. If that sounds like something you might be interested in watching, let me know down in the comments. Anyway, I've been talking a little bit too much. Let's hear from the actual campers that came along on this journey and hear about those guys. Cool. My name is Brett. I'm from Iowa. I moved out to uh, Colorado six months ago because we love the state. We travel out here all the time, so we figured why not come uh, live here for a bit. I do drive a uh, 14 Jeep Wrangler. It's got the rooftop tent that you guys will see in some of the video. Um, I do have my own YouTube channel as well. It's called That Iowa Guy. So. Oh, the, the Renegade, when, when you were saying it, what is that YouTube channel called? Good guy. Damn Renegades. <laughs> I know, what's it's going on? That Iowa Guy. That Iowa Guy, yep, cool. It's also on Instagram. Uh, I do a lot of more on Instagram than YouTube, but I do make videos about every chance I can get out, get out for the weekend to see stuff like this. I'm Dallas and this is Nico. This is Gypsy. She drives our truck. <laughs> uh, we drive a 2005 F350 power stroke. Always gets a lot of looks because we're the only four <laughs> one ton on the trails. The only diesel on the trail, so we're pretty loud. We smoke a little bit. Oh he's my pretty, god. He's pretty good at keeping the smoke down. Oh, that thing is so awesome though, yeah. And the ride is so smooth, we don't even notice it bouncing really. Quite a bit of Spending suspension and tweaking it, and uh, a few other things I need to get done. But <laughs> awesome! <laughs> He's been remodeling it for two years, and Whoa. the list of projects is still endless. Oh, that is so cool! I, I, I don't mean to spur this on you guys, but would you mind maybe one day letting me film a walk around with you guys of that rig? Absolutely! Yeah. Oh, uh, heck yeah! We awesome. get uh, a lot of questions about it, so yeah, that would be awesome yeah. just to show it. Hi, I'm Sean. Obviously, most people in the channel know my Cherokee. It's very unique. So this was my first time camping at probably about five degrees. Um, I bought insulation. I had my I had buddy heater. I had all kinds of stuff to try to make it where I wouldn't freeze to death, and I apparently survived. So I guess that's good, depending on your perspective. <laughs> um, but uh, it, I was, that last night was an absolute blast, which you're gonna get to see, I'm sure, whenever this video gets uploaded. Um, but very, very cold, but very, very much fun. And this is the most, most amount of people that I've ever camped with at one time in a setup like this with so many cool rigs out there. It was very much fun. So that's all I'm gonna ramble on about because we need to get back to the city sometime. So peace. I absolutely had a great time camping with this group and I learned so much about winter camping and just overland camping in general. I had a blast that night. Now, I know we didn't hear from Cotton, but if you were paying attention when I recruited him, he definitely had to get home. Hey, Tyler. Also, at this point in time, Zach was checking out Radium Hot Springs, but we'll see more from him and his KL in the next trail guide, and that would be Middle St. Vrain and Coney Flats. I'm excited to make that one, as that trail is the trail that caused me to create this channel, so I'm really excited to show it to you. All right, so we're at the point where the rest of the group has head down to Denver. I would like to be going there because that's where my home is, but instead I'm gonna be living in that camper. I'm taking that from Craig down to Pueblo. So we're gonna try to take a scenic route. We're gonna talk about uh, maybe some of the history. I don't know, I'm in a little bit of a time crunch. I don't work until midnight tomorrow night, which is Monday. It's Sunday right now, but I have a few issues going on. I have potential heater core block, and so I need to get some coolant. And hopefully it's not another issue I am losing coolant because of it but it's responding like a heater core block i also have a dead battery in that camper i just need to find somewhere to charge it a little bit more so that i have actual heat tonight while i sleep in it because even though pueblo is going to be warmer it's still going to be pretty cold and i need to sleep well so that's what we're going to do rambling let's go
guys, I got some food and I decided to make an executive decision. So I'm gonna stop myself right there. I was extremely exhausted and my fingertips were still numb. So I made the decision to get a hostel in Leadville and just regroup. I ended up shooting a lot from the trip from Leadville to Pueblo, but my goal is to keep this moving. So I'm going to give you the highlights and these highlights include winter scenery, a brief look at the hostel, a talk about something that I'm excited for, even if it's a little controversial. So let's just finish this video. As we wind ourselves around the mountains, I should probably tell you about the scenic byway known as Top of the Rockies. That's what we're on. It has a total length of 75 miles and it takes 2.5 hours to drive it. But you should probably spend a little bit more time, maybe a day or two, exploring all this region has to offer. We are only doing a portion of this one as it starts in Aspen via Independence Pass which is closed in the winter. It ends in either Minturn or Copper Mountain. This road rarely drops below 9,000 feet, so it is definitely top of the Rockies. Well, we are almost at our pit stop in Leadville, so let me show you my hostel, and we'll do a little bit more of this route in the morning. All right, so made it to the room. Probably gonna relax a little bit. This, ho or this hostel is really cool. Here are some images from the hostel. I definitely recommend it. I had a good night rest and it was about 80 bucks for the night. Uh, definitely a good choice. All right guys, before I go to bed, we're gonna film a great video tomorrow. I definitely have a plan for you, but just in case I used a clickbait-like title on this video, I wanna assure you it is not clickbait. I definitely re-aggravated frostbite that I had received from when I was Ripperoo, the skiing mascot for Vail Resort. Also, if there is anything about coyotes in it, we definitely had coyotes get pretty close, both Zach and the other tent campers did hear coyotes pretty close to their tents last night. And I know those guys do not over-exaggerate things. We're not about clickbait here. <laughs> So this here, right here, is Tennessee Pass, continuing on down to Buena Vista. So in addition to this being the top of the Rockies scenic byway, we are also following a historic and legendary railroad line that would be Tennessee Pass. Colorado has a complex history of trains, which would take me a long time to discuss, so we're just going to focus on the modern history of this line. Now, Tennessee Pass was built by the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, and it is a through east-west route that basically cut through the heart of the Rockies. This allowed Rio Grande to cut shipping times from the west to the east considerably, and they ran these trains fast through the mountains. I'm talking. 60 miles an hour fast. Now these short shipping times did have one major drawback and that is being a 3% grade which required expert train handling to bring those trains down the mountain. Now when Rio Grande merged with Union Pacific, traffic was eventually moved to the other routes that did not have as steep of grades. Alright, we'll come back and talk more about the railroad a little bit later in the video, but right now we are going through on the Collegiate Peaks Scenic Byway, and let's talk about that for a bit. Now this one runs through Collegiate Peaks Wilderness Area, which is named due to all the 14ers in the area that are named after universities such as Mount Harvard, Mount Oxford, Mount Yale, Mount Princeton, and Mount Columbia. Now to the off-roaders, you will know the area as it includes many great off-road trails in the area, especially out Buena Vista and St. Elmo. We have filmed a few here including Tin Cup and Taro and Boulder Mountain. We're definitely planning on coming back in 2021 and we'll show you some more. But if you have not seen Tin Cup, Antero, or Boulder Mountain, I definitely suggest checking them out after this video. All right, I think that is the Calico Shops, apparently Denver and Rio Grande's basically workshop for trains on Tennessee Pass. Now you may have heard me call this railroad legendary and historic, but you're probably saying it looks abandoned. Well, yeah, the line has been mostly dormant since 1997 when Union Pacific moved all of its traffic 
to other lines. One of these other lines is the first east-west connection UP's transcontinental route. Anyway, we need to make one important note about Tennessee Pass, and that is it is not abandoned. That's right, it's simply out of service, meaning Union Pacific still patrols the tracks, uses portions to store railroad cars, pays taxes on the land here, and does a, quite a few other things to keep it in their ownership. Anyway, this line was deemed too important by the Surface Transportation Board and needed to be an available backup through freight route should something happen to the other options. You may have heard me say I was going to talk about something controversial and I'm going to do that right now. That would be this railroad line is likely going back into train service. That's right, trains may be running on this line again. The reason that's controversial is that some people built homes right next to the never abandoned line and some even built on railroad property. Although I feel for these people, the economic benefits of putting the line back into service for both freight and passenger will far outweigh the harm to these individuals. Modern trains will easily be able to handle the spectacular railroad, so I'm personally looking forward to seeing trains on it again. Also, if you are from the short line that will be leasing the line, give me a call. I was trained by some of the best mountain grade locomotive engineers and I would love to tackle that territory. Alright, so I can go on about Tennessee Pass Line, but we are almost a Pueblo, so let's wrap it up. Now in the outro, I'm going to talk about how I think I can make these overland or camping videos better. However, this is our first attempt at telling an overland type story, and the truth is, the best feedback that we can get is from you guys. So if you liked it, leave us a like. If there is ways we can improve it, let us know in the comments. I read those comments, I adjust, and I learn to dial it in based on the feedback that I get from you guys, because what's the point of making a video if you're not making it for someone? Anyway, let's get to that outro. Alright guys, we have made it down to Pueblo, Colorado. I am going to be on time for work, this is good. Um, it's going to be a tiring night, but I've had a great weekend. I definitely don't know what I'm doing over landing, but I'm learning and I'm going to get better. I definitely have some really good teachers, I think, in this off-road community we have here in Colorado. About the video though, this was just a practice video of learning how to kind of tell an overland story. I think they're going to be much better in the future. They're definitely going to have way better imagery and they're going to have a lot more off-roading because that's to me what the overland videos should be, off-roading, camping. Thank you guys so much. I really, you guys are the reason we do this. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you're new here and haven't seen some of our true trail videos, check up there. I think you'll like them. YouTube thinks you'll like this one. And if you're not a subscriber, we'd love to have you guys. Trust me, I'm going to keep working hard to make these better. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Have a great day. Bye.